Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I always start Tuesday with announcements so here goes. First of all, this April Madness thing, we just added something. Our voicemail, our interactive voicemail provider is going to let people who want to try this system out have three free months. Now this is really cool because I also send these messages out on the voicemail system and you can push A on the system and ask me questions and I can answer back. And I like when you guys comment on the YouTube channel, but the reality is that you might have already noticed, not a great typist, okay? Much better talker than typer. So I'll say more things to you if you talk to me on AmeriCall. So call our office at 614-841-7700 if you want to try this AmeriCall thing for free. I think you'll like it. All of our health providers are on it. We can even set it up for you guys to all talk to each other. Anybody on the system can interact through the system. So anyway, call us for details. Um, the Diet Lifestyle course with the celebrity lineup, John McDougall, Neil Barnard, Dr. Ralph Moss, Dr. Alan Goldhammer, Dr. Esselstyn, um, and lots of topics, cancer, vaccinations, musculoskeletal issues, the list goes on and on. If you enroll in that course in April, you get the Informed Medical Consumer Series, which costs $1,700, you get that free, all right? So think about that. You will be sorry when you are paying $1,700 for that amazing course when you could have got it for free. And if you sign up for Dell's uh, Personal Chef Certification course and Food Over Medicine course, you also get uh, $200 off on that package. So we have lots of things for you guys to uh, take advantage of. And it's still April. We've got a lot of days left, so call us and talk. All right, I've got some great stuff to talk to you guys about this week. And I want to start with infants and antibiotics and weight gain and related topics. So... Let's just start at the beginning. Over 75% of the antibiotics that are manufactured in the United States are not used by humans. They're injected into farm animals. And there are two reasons for this. One is that in these factory farms, and I'm sure you've seen pictures, there are so many animals crammed into a very small space. The risk of infection is high, so antibiotics are used as a prophylactic measure. The other thing is that um, for reasons that we don't entirely understand, antibiotics act as a growth promoter. And since animal food is sold by the pound, this is helpful to farmers. Using growth promoters means more profit in shorter periods of time. Now, less than 25% of the antibiotics are prescribed to humans, but they're often prescribed inappropriately. First of all, they're used to treat conditions they can't possibly be effective for, like viral, and viral infections and fungal infections, and then they're prescribed too frequently. There are articles in the Health Briefs Online Library describing studies showing that both children and adults often, not always, but often, recover from bacterial infections without any medical intervention at all. We're pretty quick to prescribe the antibiotics. It's generally recognized that one of the side effects of um, taking antibiotics is gut bacteria destruction, uh, which can affect a lot of aspects of human function, including immune regulation and, potentially, weight gain. Recent study looked at the effects of antibiotics prescribed to infants on weight gain and health in um, finished children. The researchers wanted to know if antibiotics fattened up children in the same way that they seemed to fatten up adults. The cohort was comprised of over 12,000 boys and girls, and it compared children who were given antibiotics to children who were not. The data included weight and height measurements and drug purchase uh, data from birth to 24 months. Children who took antibiotics were heavier than those who didn't, and the effect was greater for kids who took antibiotics like biaxin and erythromycin. The researchers concluded that antibiotic exposure before six months of age or repeatedly throughout infancy was associated with increased body mass in children. They emphasized the importance of careful use of antibiotics and that narrow spectrum antibiotics might be better choices. I agree, but I was disappointed that the researchers didn't talk about other issues, like using antibiotics in animals, um, and that um, probiotics should always be prescribed to both children and adults following antibiotic treatment to restore the loss of beneficial bacteria that always accompanies antibiotic use. And second, we need to address the cause of the chronic infections that lead to more and more prescriptions of antibiotics, which include consuming cow's milk products. When kids eat cow's milk, uh, this can lead to a cycle of declining health. 
Kids consume the dairy products. They're more prone to get infections, usually ear infections, by the way. They're treated with antibiotics, which wipe out some or sometimes all of the gut bacteria. This results in weaker immune systems, which makes the child susceptible to more infections, and the cycle goes on and on. So eliminating cow's milk would go a long way to reduce the incidence of infections in children add to that prescribing antibiotics only when necessary and uh, we'd have healthier kids and as it turns out maybe some thinner kids too all right this next uh, article i want to talk about it would be funny if it wasn't serious um, i'll get to the funny part later but according to a new study visits to the emergency room for constipation are increasing and the total cost in 2011 just for the er visits 1.6 billion dollars now, constipation affects between 12 and 19 percent of the population, depending upon what study you review. And senior author Dr. Anthony Lembo says that one problem is that many people, including doctors, just don't think that it's a very serious condition. His previous research has shown that hospital admission rates are very high for it, which prompted him and his co-authors to research emergency room visits for constipation, too. The data were gathered for over 950 United States hospitals and showed that in 2006, we had about 497,000 plus ER visits for constipation. But by 2011, the number of visits had climbed to over 700,000, an increase of 42%. Now, by way of comparison, there was a 22% increase in the number of overall visits during the same time period. The treatment cost per patient also rose. It was $1,500 in 2006, and it increased to $2,300 during that same time period. The two groups most likely to be taken to the ER for constipation, infants and elderly people. Lumbo says that, too, mirrors the population. Now, this is what is, it just blows your mind. Lumbo says his study doesn't explain why people have to visit the ER for constipation. He just has no idea what, what makes that happen. He surmises that it might be because of increases in the number of people who have government-funded insurance, and he thinks that they're more likely to go to the ER than buy over-the-counter uh, supplements to help with constipation. I'll offer my alternative explanation. All Americans, regardless of their socioeconomic standards, all, almost all Americans, regardless of their socioeconomic stand, uh, status and, and um, insurance um, uh, situation, are eating a diet high in animal foods, low in fiber, and usually including dairy products, which can be constipating. The result is constipation. They're dehydrated. That makes it worse. Rich people, poor people, everybody in between, this, this standard American diet is eaten by many, many people at the lowest and highest end of the economic spectrum, and we end up with constipation as a result and a whole lot of other health issues too. So it isn't just the $1.6 billion we spend at the ER. We can add billions of, that, uh, of dollars to that for people who are admitted to the hospital, visits to gastroenterologists, prescription drugs, over-the-counter supplements, and then treating the serious conditions that result from long-term constipation, which can include colon cancer. Easy solution. Eat a whole foods, high fiber, low fat, plant-based diet. Grocery bill goes down. Constipation usually goes away. In fact, most people say that this diet is a moving experience. And we'll save billions of dollars, not only each family saving money, but collectively on all those things I mentioned before. The other thing, too, I'm convinced that if we solve this constipation problem, a lot of people would be happier. Have you ever noticed constipated people? Not so joyful all the time, right? So I think we'd have a happier society if we got everybody's bowels moving a little bit better. All right, that's all for today as usual. Pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you again on Thursday with more news.